Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Brandon. Thank you for joining me for another skincare vlog. I'm in a different locale right now. You can see the kitchen and my indoor garden in the background, which I am growing. I have a lot of okra growing right now in New York City in the winter. Actually, it's spring now. Oh, I'm so excited. It's getting warmer. I'm so excited about that. But yeah, I'm in a different locale. I hope you like it. Um, I'm using my ring light too, so you can actually see my face, which is nice. I'm not in the windowless office that I use for my videos anymore. So I, I'm gonna sort of like go back and forth, I think, but I wanted to do a very different video. I wanted to go through my treasure trove of tinted mineral sunscreens, my mineral only tinted sunscreens. I have about 12 here that I wanted to just go through. I already know this video is gonna be pretty long because I filmed it a couple of weeks ago and then my computer, I think, corrupted my SD card. So it is, the video is gone in addition to two other videos that I had to refilm. And that video was like 30 minutes. I'm gonna try and just sort of speed my way through so you can see all of the sunscreens I have. But these are all the ones that I both like and don't necessarily like and i'll tell you why the reasons for that as well as the research behind some of the ingredients in these sunscreens but before i begin please hit the like button down below it really helps my channel grow and reach more reach more people and i really appreciate it and please hit the subscribe button down below as well i love to have you here to join the skincare research community i would love to discuss and have conversations with you the viewer about anti-aging and the science behind different skincare products and ingredients if that sounds fun to you definitely stick around hit the subscribe button i publish every monday wednesday friday as long as i have a working computer that isn't corrupting my sd files okay so let me go ahead and just whew, i'm already like sweating i think the warm weather now is it's getting warmer in new york and i'm so excited i go to texas i'm originally i'm originally from texas i go to texas on friday it's going to be a lot warmer there and i'm really looking forward to it because i'm going to houston and it's going to be humid and i love Humidity. I love humid environments. I think it's great for your skin. But here are all of my tinted mineral physical sunscreens that I have. I put it in a glass baking pie dish, but it's um, it's a lot of sunscreens, a lot of tinted physical mineral sunscreens I have. I think I have 12 in here. Um, technically, I think there is a combination sunscreen, the dermatology sunscreen that I actually really like, but it does have zinc oxide in here. I'm gonna get to that in a minute. But yeah, I have a problem. <laughs> I have an issue. I don't know what's going on. It's some, I don't know. I just cannot stop. I'm a sunscreen junkie, I guess. I cannot stop buying them, but I really like trying them and, f and figuring out what works, what doesn't work, what I like, what I don't like. That really helps me to just really find sunscreens that will be mainstays in my regimen, my anti-aging regimen. If you don't know, mineral sunscreens, they are great. They are probably the best anti-aging product that you could use because the sun contributes upwards to 80 to 90% of the visible signs of skin aging, depending upon the paper that you read. A mineral sunscreen, just a mineral sunscreen, is a physical blocking agent. It contains zinc oxide, sometimes it blended with titanium dioxide. These are minerals inert benign minerals from the earth that sit on the skin create a physical barrier from for uv from from uv from penetrating the skin uv uva in particular causes skin aging uvb uh, causes skin burning as well as both of them just drive the the risk of skin cancer as well but in comparison to chemical sunscreens, which contain chemical agents like avabenzone, octanoxate, octocrylin, uh, even tenosorb, and uh, what's the other one? Uvenol A+. These are, these are pretty good chemical UV filters that protect against the sun, but they degrade in light and UV pretty easily, and they're not as reliable, in my opinion, as something like zinc oxide, which actually creates a physical barrier against sun penetration. Whereas the chemicals, they not only degrade in response to UV, depending upon the chemical filter, but they, they also filter out the, the UV rather than just blocking it altogether. So that's why I like mineral sunscreens but the problem with that is they leave the mineral sunscreens leave a very white pasty cast on the skin it's not great even for people with pale skin tones and you know of course for people with darker or deeper skin tones it's definitely going to leave that white noticeable cast so most people really want to reach for something that's camouflage while also providing them the protection that they require tinted mineral sunscreens on the other hand contain an ingredient known as iron oxides and iron oxides another mineral type ingredient can not only it doesn't really have any sort of spf potential so it doesn't really protect against uv but it does help to research is showing now that it does help to provide protection against blue light 
and high energy visible light, so HEV. The visible light, the blue light, can not only drive hyperpigmentation, particularly in people with darker, deeper skin tones, but blue light, visible light can also possibly, according to the research we have now, the emerging research we have now, can possibly contribute to oxidative stress in the skin, which contributes to the visible signs of skin aging. Now, to the to the extent of, you know, how how is it to the magnitude of UV? We don't really know because we don't have that robust evidence set, that, that data set, as we do with things like UV because we know about, we've known about that longer. We've looked into that a lot longer. We've, we're only really reaching the the tip of the iceberg when it comes to blue light in, in regard to the research we have on it. So as more research comes out about it, I'm sure we'll learn more. But it's, it's really interesting to know that tinted mineral sunscreens can provide that protection from blue light in addition to the minerals providing protection against UV. So you have a really good combo going for you that's going to really maximize your, your anti-aging goals. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started into talking about the sunscreens that I have. So oh, I just have too many, okay? So I have 12 tinted mineral sunscreens. I'm gonna be going, I'm gonna be using them all up, even the ones I don't like. But let me just briefly start with my favorite mineral tinted sunscreen, and that is the Elta MD phys physical uh, I think it's, yeah, SPF 41 tinted mineral sunscreen. This is a, what's termed as a medical grade sunscreen, which is basically, you can only buy this in dermatologist offices as well as, you can buy it online. So you can get it pretty easily. Like you don't have to necessarily go to a dermatologist, but it's a medical grade sunscreen. And it really is about, I, honestly, I think it's about marketing. I think that you know, you have people who are in the funnel, if you will, and who are definitely very interested. They, they're in dermatologist offices, so they're definitely very interested and they're going to likely buy this. So you're going to get more more customers potentially by marketing it as a medical grade sunscreen. But this is a this is great for extra sensitive and post-procedural skin, as it says on the label. It also has quercetin in it, which is a plant-derived polyphenol, basically an antioxidant that can help to further protect the skin from UV as well as other the, the onslaught of environmental uh, triggers for free radicals and oxidation in our skin. Also, it has alpha lipoic acid, alpha lipoic acid ALA. There's some evidence to suggest that alpha lipoic acid can also help to reverse some signs of photo damage, photo aged skin. So having this in a sunscreen in condition with a quercetin is promising. And I really like this. I actually have a video. I have a review of this sunscreen on my channel. I filmed it a few months ago, but I filmed it in my bedroom at night when there wasn't great lighting like there is here. So you can't really see it. I, I'm definitely going to be filming a, diff a, a new review of this, but I can give you just a look and you can see what the color looks like when it comes out of the tube. This is the color, but it blends in. Oops. I'm just dropping sunscreens everywhere. It blends in very nicely. It provides a nice glow and honestly yeah do you see how it just blends in now i don't really like swatching sunscreens on my hand because i feel like it doesn't show you how it actually looks on your face because whenever i put it on my face and my hand it, it it tends to blend out more easily on my hand versus my face um but that being said i can vouch for this one this really blends out and covers it, it covers your entire face and it doesn't it's not pale it's a good match for at least my for my skin tone, it is lightly tinted. So whether or not this is going to be work, whether or not this is going to work in deeper, darker skin tones, I can't really say. If you've used this and you have a deeper, darker skin tone, leave a comment down below just so if, if someone else is watching this, they can they can really know you know how this works. Yeah, I really like this. It's it's, it's a fantastic anti-aging sunscreen. A couple of weekends ago, I was in Manhattan and I went into. Whole Foods. Whole Foods usually is like swarming with people, but they're actually limiting the number of people who can go in, obviously. Um, so it was really nice. And I was in the, I was supposed to be getting food, but I was actually just looking at sunscreen. And I found this one that was on clearance and it's the Think Sport Naturally Tinted Mineral Sunscreen, SPF 30 plus. This was about $10. It's a, I think this is a two ounce tube. Yeah, two fluid ounces. And it is also another, it's a, it's called naturally tinted. I think this was on clearance because it was, um, I think they're rebranding the packaging and I just wanted to try it. Now this is a much lighter tint and I honestly don't really like it. It kind of dries down matte or matte and powdery almost, but this is a much lighter tint as you can see. I'm gonna have a lot of sun protection on this hand once this video is over. And this actually, 
blends out nicely on my hand, but like I said, it doesn't really give you good rep representation of how it is on my face. It is very light and it also has a fragrance to it. It doesn't have added fragrance in it, but it has, I think, raspberry seed extract oil and it smells really nice, but people who don't like sort of fragrancy sunscreens, you might not like this. I actually like the smell. That being said, it does provide protection and it has SPF 30, it's mineral sunscreen only, physical, I think it's only zinc oxide, yeah, 20% non-nano zinc oxide. But like I said, it kind of dries down a little powdery even though it has oils in it. If you have acne prone skin or you can't really do, you have oily skin, this may not be for you even if it does dry down a little bit. But yeah, it's not my favorite. The tint is too pale, too light. It's not gonna work for everybody, especially even for me, for my skin type, it doesn't work for me. So I tend to use this as a base layer and then apply something a little darker over another darker uh, sunscreen tint after it dries down. Okay, another sunscreen that didn't really work well for me is the Australian Gold Mineral Lotion SPF 50. I really like the packaging though, and it's a good price point. I think it's like $10 on Amazon right now. I actually thought about getting this just for my body because I kind of like this on my body. It gives me a nice glow and it makes me look like I have somewhat of a sun-kissed glow, which, you know, looks healthy. But when I put this on my face, and I have a video I, where I reviewed this, uh, the sunscreen and I actually applied it to my face. You can watch that. But the color is too too dark orangish for me. I, I It's not bad, I don't really mind the color necessarily, but it dries down really matte for me and it, it, it gets really drying. It's not extremely moisturizing. The Elta MD is very moisturizing and it stays moisturized, like hydrate. it makes my skin hydrated all day. Whereas this dries down powdery and it's, it's just too dry for me. It goes on very, uh, very hydrating, but it dries down and I don't like a feeling of matte sunscreen. I like, I kind of like greasy sunscreen <laughs> to be honest. Like I like something that's hydrating and that's going to keep me looking shiny. I kind of like, like the shiny look. Like I think it looks healthy and, and, uh, makes your skin look youthful, but yeah, dry skin is not great. And I think if you have oily skin, this may be fantastic for you. Uh, but I just didn't like it. It wasn't my favorite. I, I'm definitely gonna be using this up. I think I have a little bit more in here. You can, wait, do I? No, I don't, but it smells actually really nice. I actually do like the smell of this. All righty, so moving on. Okay, let's go ahead and just look for something that I actually like. Okay, so here's the MD Solar Sciences SPF 30 Tinted Mineral Cream. I've used this all up. There's no more, there's nothing left in this bottle. It is a 1.7 ounce fluid tube. I think a lot of tinted mineral sunscreens are in these tiny 1.7 ounce fluid tube. So you don't get a lot. And th this is again why I like the, where is it? This is again why I like the Elta MD because it's $33, but you get three fluid ounces. So you can travel with it easily. If you're flying and you want to put it on a carry-on bag, you can travel it with, with it pretty easily and you get a lot for a tinted mineral sunscreen. Whereas these just 1.7 ounces for, I think this is also like $30, $30 is it $30, $33 maybe? It's it's up there for the amount that you get, but the color is is darker, um, so it may be more beneficial for people with darker skin tones compa in comparison with the the Elta MD, and it's very moisturizing. I think it's because it has a lot of uh, dimethicones in it and silicones in here that make it appear that make it go on like silk. It's it's silky smooth. It feels like just putting melted butter on on your skin kind of, but it's there's no oils in it. It's oil free um, and it, but it, it's hydrating. It keeps your skin hydrated all day. I really like it. I don't think I have enough in here to show you what the color looks like. Maybe I do. Let me just, I don't know if you can see that. If that's going to provide you, do you see all, yeah, it's much, it looks really gross on my skin or like my hand, I'm sorry, but yeah, you can see it's much darker and it blends out really nicely on my face anyway. Like I think it, it evens out my skin tone and it doesn't, it doesn't appear that dark whenever I put it on my skin and blend it out. It just blends out very nicely and it lightens up a little bit. So you get that SPF 30 protection, you get that blue light protection and, and you get a little bit of extra color too, which I, I don't mind. Again, you know, that's totally fine as long as it's protecting me. And I just love how hydrating this is. I haven't tried the the non-tinted mineral cream version of this, but that's definitely on my list 
Um, I'll probably try that this summer, as long as I can get through all of these in time. Okay, another one that I really, really like, and I'm actually wearing it on my skin right now, so you can see what it looks like on my face, is the Dermatology Tinted Mineral Sunscreen SPF 46. Now, I kind of snuck this in here, like I said, because this isn't technically a 100% mineral sunscreen. It does have zinc oxide in here, but it's blended with octanoxate, which is a chemical filter that uh, filters out UVB. So the octanoxate is not going to be great for UVA, the, anti -a the, the aging rays, but it has zinc oxide in here, I think uh, 12%. Uh, and it's SPF 46 and a universal tint. Uh, a lot of people with different skin tones can definitely manage this. It blends out very nicely. It's extremely hydrating. It has niacinamide in here, which is a form of a B vitamin that helps to calm redness and is also anti-inflammatory. And I think it also has, what, oh, not, not weed extract. I think it has not weed extract in here, which is basically like resveratrol, which is a really powerful antioxidant, whether or not that, I mean, in theory, that could be very helpful for protecting the skin further from UV and pollutants and things that attack collagen and elastin and, and whatnot and, and protect the, the collagen and elastin in your skin. But whether or not that's actually doing this through topical application is very, you know, I don't know. I don't know what the R&D is on this. I don't know if they have studies about that, but I really like this just because it's extremely hydrating and it really calms down skin. My skin's prone to redness, just like, just when I think the color red or think the word red, it like starts getting red, but this really helps to camouflage any redness. It provides a nice universal coverage for most skin tones, provides you a good SPF 46, pretty high up there. And yeah, I love it. This is also another 1.7 fluid ounce. So you don't get as much as you would the Elta MD, but just like the Elta MD, this is also, I think, marketed as a medical grade sunscreen. Yes, a medical grade sunscreen, but I highly recommend checking it out if you're okay with it containing octanoxate. To follow up with that, I actually have another sunscreen. <laughs> it's a tinted mineral sunscreen, 100% mineral sunscreen that looks just like the dermatology sunscreen. So. Look at the dermatology sunscreen, right? This is a combination sunscreen, zinc oxide and octanoxate. Here's a tinted mineral sunscreen that's also marketed as medical grade, I think, but is just purely 100% zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. It is the Realm Skincare Reflect SPF 42 mineral tinted sunscreen. Do you see how similar these bottles are? That can't. That can't be a coincidence. Even look at the green banding. Do the green, ban green bandings on top and that's in, on the bottom? Hmm, highly suspicious. But I got this because it looked like the dermatology sunscreen and I was looking for an alternative to the dermatology that was 100% mineral that wasn't, um, that didn't have the chemical in here, in the, that didn't have the chemical filter that was just 100% mineral. Cause I have somewhat concerns about chemicals absorbing into the bloodstream. So this is a, again, high medical grade sunscreen, but it's purely, I think it's just, yeah, it's zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. In contrast with the, uh, the dermatology, the only antioxidants it has in here is vitamin E, which is found in a plethora of skincare products. So it's like, you know, whoop de doo it's not a big deal. Um, it also has hy hyaluronic acid in here. I think the dermatology Sunscreen also has hyaluronic acid, but pretty much every moisturizer has that as well. So they're, they're kind of like hyping that up on the on the label. But overall, I think the color matches pretty pretty nicely to, or pretty similar to the Dermatology sunscreen. I'll show you the color. But um, this is a 2.1 fluid ounce compared to the Dermatology, which is 1.7 fluid ounce. But here is the Realm color. There's the Realm color. Do you see? It's somewhat light. I think I put out a little bit too much in here on my skin. And here, oh, I'm just dropping everything. Okay, here is the dermatology color. So I think the dermatology color is a little, is definitely lighter than the realm color. I think maybe darker skin, skin tones would probably do more so probably fare more well with the, the, the realm tinted moisturizer or a tinted moisturizer sunscreen. I, they're labeled as moisturizers, uh, but they provide the same protection, level of protection as a sunscreen. It's just that they are lighter. They're lighter and easier to spread around. So this is how the dermatology sort of blends in. You can see that it's more, 
Uh, it yeah, it's definitely lighter. It blends in lighter, but it's so moist. Um, and here's the realm sunscreen. I feel like the realm definitely when I wear am wearing it, it's definitely a noticeable darker color. But when you blend it out, it blends out really nicely. It's it's very light. It's almost as light as the dermatology sunscreen, but you can see the contrast. I mean, it provides a nice like sun kissed look. Um, it says it's almost as light as the dermatology sunscreen in in re in a, in relation to the viscosity or the weight so it blends out very nicely the the only thing is it is a little bit thicker just a little bit like almost not even noticeable just because it's only zinc oxide and titanium dioxide minerals minerals tend to be thicker on the thicker end than chemicals because the minerals are actually like particles like earth like particles that are in the sunscreen um, so it's a little bit thicker but it's overall very, very similar in terms of the texture and the, the lightness of the dermatology sunscreen. So I like it a lot, but again, you can see after maybe just like a minute, it kind of settles down and it doesn't, it's not as dark. So this is, I mean, it looks like a healthy, healthy glow, right? Almost, I feel like I would wear, definitely, definitely wear the Realm skincare in the summer if I was like, walking along the beach or something, which I never do. So I always imagine myself doing things like walking on the beach in, in midday in the summer or something like that, but I never do that. I don't really like the beach that much. So, but you know, maybe I will do that this summer. I don't know, um, or go to Disney World or something. I think that, you know, having that glow would be nice. One thing I wanted to tell you is that the Realm Skincare SPF 42 Sun Moisturizing Lotion, SPF lotion, is it's 2.1 fluid ounces versus the dermatology which is 1.7 ounces so you get a little bit more but this sunscreen is fifty dollars and i yeah it's fifty dollars for this for two ounces 2.1 fluid ounces versus the dermatology which is like 20 something dollars i don't i think it's more than twice as much as the dermatology i i'm pretty sure um even though you're getting just like a tiny bit more so that's the only kind of caveat you have here is that it's a great 100% mineral dupe to the dermatology, but it's $50. So you kind of have to see it as like an investment in your future, I guess, if you're wanting to really buy that. There are definitely other options out there that are more better price points, but just keep that in mind. But I, I still highly recommend it if you definitely want to buy it or check it out. One thing that you can do also, if you didn't, if you don't want to spend money on skincare products or sunscreen, is just ask for them for your birthday or for holidays or for just like random gifts from people. Um, you know, you could definitely do that. And at Christmas, for example, I've got like four different tinted mineral sunscreens that I love and use. So there's an option for you. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about the CeraVe tinted mineral sunscreen, the SPF 30. Uh, yeah, so this is a drugstore sunscreen and it's zinc oxide, titanium dioxide. It's a tinted mineral sunscreen. It's definitely a lower price point compared with the Realm sunscreen, tinted mineral sunscreen. But as you, if you watch my review of this video or of this sunscreen, if you watch my review video of this sunscreen, you know that I'm not a fan of the color. I think it's not great for my skin. I think it's too orange for my skin tone and it feels very greasy as well. Even though there's no oils in here, I think it's just because it has those, it might have like silicones or dimethicones in here, but it's great because it has niacinamide, just like the dermatology in here. The niacinamide can calm down redness and inflammation. And it has the, did I say niacinamide? Yeah. And it has ceramides, the three essential ceramides for the skin that helps to improve the hydration of the skin. And I talk more about that in my review video of the, derm of the uh, CeraVe tinted mineral sunscreen. But I personally am not a fan of the color. The texture is not great, especially if you're outdoors and it's hot and you're sweating. It's just like, it's not fantastic uh, for outdoor use. And if you live in a humid environment, just forget about it, at least in my opinion. I can't see myself going to Houston, going home and like being in a humid, super humid environment and wearing that outdoors. I just can't see that happening. But yeah, not a fan of it. I definitely have a little bit more in here. I will be using it up, but yeah, I just use this as sort of like to go over a lighter sunscreen, like the Think Sport sunscreen. And it seems to work okay, but I don't really like use this as a sole sunscreen or rely on it a hundred percent. Okay, one more sunscreen. Wait, no, I have a lot more sunscreens. Okay. Here's the Amavara SPF 50 sunscreen. 
And I really like the packaging of this, but you know, don't judge a book by its cover. When I first started getting into sunscreen, I bought my very first one was I think the Amavara. Is that how Amavara? Yeah. Uh, and it was just, it was a non-tinted version and I would use it and put it all over my skin and it was okay. Like it, it's made with transparent mineral zinc. Uh, at least that's what they are using on their label. And it blended out really nicely. But the thing about it is it's extremely thick. Even the tinted mineral version is extremely, extremely thick. So it's hard to rub out or rub out. It's hard to blend out on your skin without tugging your skin and pulling your skin, at least in my experience, and I don't like to do that. And the the tint is also a lot darker than my skin type, so it's not ideal, and I'll just show you. It might be okay for like people with darker skin tones, but let me just show you the color. Do you see how dark it is? I think it's almost on par with the, uh, the MD Solar Sciences sunscreen. Yeah, I think this is like almost on par with the MD Solar Sciences sunscreen. But yeah, it is definitely darker and it's thicker and it has, yeah, it's definitely thicker. I think it's just zinc oxide in here. It has a smell that brings me back to whenever I was first getting into sunscreen and I, it was like spring. It was like this time of year, I think like two years ago. Um, and do you ever have that? Like we have like smells that just like trigger memories. Um, but yeah, I, it has like, it does have a noticeable fragrance. It doesn't have fragrance added to it, but I think it's, it, it must be like the, the ginger root extract. I don't know why that's in here. Maybe antioxidant, anti-inflammatory perhaps, but it is on a little bit on the darker side. I have a lot left over to use this. I definitely will be using this, but I have to be very gentle about using it. I try to use like a SPF primer or something, like a moisturizer that has titanium dioxide in it, like the Pyongkong Yol that just has titanium dioxide in it, just to help like to smooth out my skin so it can be easier to to spread out, but it's not, it's not my favorite. I don't know if I'll be purchasing this one again. Uh, I don't know, like, I don't, ugh, I can't really recommend this. I don't know if they reformulated it recently or not for a lighter, for a lighter feel as well as a lighter tint. And if they did, then, you know, I stand corrected, but this isn't my favorite, but I still do like the, I like the smell if you know what I mean. I don't think you know what I mean, but so I did a video a few days ago. Actually, I did it like a month or two ago, but it was the Color Science Total Eye 3 in 1 Renewal SPF 35. And this is just for the under eye, or it's marketed for just the under eye. I don't even know if you're seeing that. Um, yeah. And when in the video, I mentioned how I don't like this at all. This isn't technically, I guess. It, I consider this a tinted sunscreen just because it is a tinted sunscreen. Like you don't need a specific product for your under eyes. Like I don't get that at all. Like you, you don't need this. And there's so little in here for the amount of money. It's two point, it's 0.23 fluid ounces. And I can't, I asked, this, I asked for this for Christmas, so I didn't even pay for it, but I feel like it's kind of high up there for the amount that you get. And the fact that you don't even need it because you can just use the tinted mineral sunscreen underneath your eye uh is why i can't recommend it and also it really creases underneath the eye and it, it's really embarrassing when you're out in public and it's creasing under your eye it dries down becomes powdery i don't like it at all but again i'm going to use it up <laughs> i might just like try to use it up on my face and not just like under my eye but you can see the color is very light I think it's very similar to the Color Science, the Color Science, uh, the Sun Forgettable Color Science sunscreen, facial sunscreen, the color anyway. And if that's the case, why not just use, it's actually thicker. Why would they use a, a thick mineral? It's just zinc oxide and titanium dioxide, but why would you put that under your eye where you need some moisture? I don't get that. But yeah, I mean, even right now on my arm, it's kind of like pilling, pilling up, balling up or whatever. Uh, so yeah, I don't like it. And that brings me to what I just got in the mail yesterday, and that's the Color Science Sun Forgettable Sun Protection SPF 50, I think. Um, this is a, yeah, it's SPF 50 PA3+, the highest I think is 4+, which is basically the UVA rating. You definitely want to reach for a 4+, if you can get it. But this is a chemical-free tinted mineral sunscreen with just zinc oxide, 12%. And... I used this once, I used this yesterday, so I can't really give a good review of this, but I can give you the color, I can show you the color. Um, people rave about it online, but just like, this is a lot lighter. 
where is it? Oh, this is a lot lighter in texture, and it kind of looks a lot lighter in color too. I think this is the original color. I think they have three shades. One, there's like a glow and something else, like a, can't really remember it. Or maybe, it, no, it's bronze. That's what it is. Um, I got the original. So I haven't used this solely. I think I'll use this on its own tomorrow throughout the day. Um, 1.8 fluid ounces. So you get a little bit more than you will in the dermatology and the MD Solar Sciences. I think this says $35 maybe. So yeah, these are these are on the high end but it's lighter, people rave about it online, so I'm interested to see how it is, and then I'll do a separate video just reviewing it for you later. But people also rave about the total three in one SPF 35 under eye SPF sunscreen online. Like I see a lot of like uh, social media influencers and YouTube influencers, beauty gurus who are just can't live without it. But I'm just like, why? I just don't get it. Um, yeah, I don't recommend that. But this I might recommend because I wore it yesterday, but I wore it on top of other sunscreens. But tomorrow I'm going to wear it just on its own, then I'll do a review and you can just sort of see how it is. But I think it is promising. I mean, it's just zinc oxide tinted. I like it. I feel like I can't think whenever there's a camera on me. Okay, so here is the beauty counter. This is a spray on sunscreen. This is the deep tint. I think there's a lighter tint, like a light to medium tint. This is a six fluid ounces spray on sunscreen. The reason I got this is because I wanted a body sunscreen that I could use as an SPF. This is SPF 30 that would give me a somewhat of a sun tan look. And this one actually fits the bill. And I got the medium deep because when it when you actually blend it out, it looks like a sun tan. And I spray this on my hand. These aren't generally ideal when it comes to sun protection because when you just spray them on like this, uh, there's a lot of gaps and a lot of holes that the UV can get into. It's not reliable, but if you spray it on your hands like what I do and then rub it in like a sunscreen, it works pretty nicely. But this actually gives me a nice farmer's tan that I actually like and I could see myself using in the summer. So I'll just show you what it looks like. I also, I think this might be an MLM company. I'm sorry, I don't promote MLMs at all. I don't think it is. I, I'm not sure. There's a store in Manhattan, I think, a, a beauty counter store in Manhattan. But anyway, yeah, I really like it. So let me just show you what the color looks like and then I'll put it on my arm so I can show you. Kind of looks like a tan. Do you see the color? And it blends out very nicely. And I just kind of go up to where my shirt sleeve is. So it kind of looks like a natural farmer's tan. I don't know why I keep saying farmer's tan. Is there a better word for that? Um, yeah, it, it dries down nicely. It kind of makes your arm hair look a little weird at first, but yeah, I think it look, it makes you, if you're really pale and you want sort of a suntan look without actually going underneath the sun or a tanning bed, this might be a good option or just like any, any tinted moisturizer or tinted sunscreen could be a good option, but you get a lot in this bottle. You get six ounces and you can see the contrast there, but yeah, if you're pale and you want something that looks healthy and more natural uh, without also using gradual tanners like DHA, for for example, that may be, this may be a good way to go. I really like it. It smells nice, but there's no fragrance. It's just zinc oxide, 14.5%. And yeah, I highly recommend it. I think it has some flower extracts in here. I think that's what's providing the, the, the aroma. Okay, so here's one that I just got in the mail, I think yesterday or the day before, and it is the Bear Republic Mineral Tinted Sunscreen SPF. 30. This is also, I think, a one point fluid ounce bottle. Um, yeah, I have used this. I don't really, I kind of like it, but I don't, I can't, I, I, I don't know. I haven't used it enough, but I feel like it's a little too light of a tint. And here's the color. Do you see how light that is? It, it's pretty light. So I don't think it'll, it'll work for everybody, but it has, I think it has shea butter in here. Um, it's extremely moisturizing. I, I was under the impression that this would be a good substitute or dupe for the MD Solar Sciences, just because the ingredients were somewhat similar and people were saying it also goes on silky smooth. But I have a feeling, it says that it is a sheer cream to powder formula. So, and it does kind of dry down a little powdery, but it is very moisturizing and it kind of feels a little greasy. So I kind of like that. Um, but it's not going to work for everybody. Again, the color, the texture, it might be a little too, too greasy for some people. 
Uh, but that being said, I like this as either a base layer or to go over maybe a darker tinted sunscreen layer like the CeraVe. I, again, haven't used this as much yet, so I can't really give like a good review overall of this. So I will give you a a specific dedicated review in a future video. But yeah, that's all of these sunscreens that I have in my pie dish, all the tinted mineral sunscreens I have. That doesn't even cover the chemical sunscreens I have or the just regular mineral sunscreens I have. So I have a lot to get through, but I hope you like this video and I hope this has given you a glimpse into all the tinted mineral sunscreens that are out there. There's definitely more that I haven't covered. If you have any suggestions, leave it down in the comment box. If you like this video, please hit the like button down below, hit the subscribe button to stick around for future videos. I'd love to have you here. So I'm going to go ahead and sign out. Um, I've been talking for 41 minutes and my throat and my mouth feel very parched. So I will see you in the next video and stay safe. Uh, bye.